Hey guys, Mike here from Rust Brothers. Uh, we've got this shit all painted. We've got it all polished with a special bunch of help from Matt at uh, Legacy there. So the car's looking great. We've got the new rims and tires on it. Uh, we're still waiting for the one rim. It showed up, uh, showed up yesterday. We had to fly in, for, in from Toronto where the matching rim was. Guy said we could have drove and picked it up, but I'd like to have all four matching rims. So right now we're waiting for our buddy Steve. He's got a company called Wireworks. And as the name implies, Steve does wiring. Uh, LS's, Coyotes, you name it. This one should be a walk in the park from it, but it's just an old Chevelle. But I don't like wiring. I get confused just looking at the harness. So we're bringing in an expert to get this puppy wired up. In the meantime, we're just gonna give it a little bit of clean up here in the shop so Steve doesn't figure he's walking into a dump. Well, okay, hopefully. Hey, anyway, we're gonna give it a clean, give it a spit polish. As my grandmother used to say, we're gonna even some spots out. But anyway, uh, that's what's happening to, uh, today. So like I said, when you watch the video, remember if you like it, do us a favor, tell us you like it, subscribe to the channel. And if you want, leave a comment, whether it's negative or positive, we don't care. You like something, you don't like something, let us know and we'll see what we can do about it. Anyway, stay tuned and remember, those that like, those that have should give, like, subscribe, comment. No, no, those that have should give. Peace, love and joy. It's early in the morning, guys. <laughs> Only well, we have one coffee. Anyway, talk to you later. Stay tuned. Okay. Anyway, anyway, anyway glad you can make it. Yeah, so glad to be here. Here, we'll, yeah. we'll take this table, set it up for your operating table. Yeah, sounds good. And then if you need anything, I found the MSD box. It's an AL. Perfect. I mean, Blair, we're saying you're adding another layer of uncertainty. I said, no, I'm not. I'm protecting my motor. <laughs> well, I mean, they're pretty no, well foolproof, right? Yeah. I mean, it's not like they're... Big locks don't like to rev, so let's keep them from going up too That's high. Right. We don't want it to do so. <laughs> That's okay. They say it red lines at 5750, but yeah. I like to set it at 500 and give myself a little, for 5,000, give yeah. myself a little. There's bit. always a, a little air of margin yeah. there to play with, so. Okay, yeah. let me Okay, let me grab the kit. Get the kit there. All right, yeah. I'm gonna start by getting the. Yeah, they, those kits got held up for two weeks at the border. I was starting to panic. Yeah. Why did I rip the harness out before the kit? Right yeah, now? I was hoping to definitely come here beginning of February yeah. where I had a little bit more time to come and get this sorted out for you, but uh, time wise. Okay. Yeah, right? exactly. So we'll sort it out now. You're yeah. here now. What you uh, What are you doing here? I right. am replacing all of the wiring here at the Chevelle for these guys so they get on their road trip next week. So okay. we're going right. to get uh, started by ripping all the factory wiring out of the car. We're going to get putting in the American Auto kit and uh, we'll go from there. Awesome. Okay. Here we go, American Auto Wire 6869 Chevelle. Uh, here's the, I got this uh, speed hot cages here. Pretty cool, man. So you've seen those speed boxes, do they work? Oh yeah, yeah, it works well. Yeah, it's a good piece. Um, I, I actually like the GPS Speedo. If you don't have a transmission that's got a, uh, an easy to wire up gear, it's just- Well, same thing, doesn't matter your tire size, doesn't you're gonna have to switch everything. Exactly, yeah. Right, instead of, I think I'm going 100 and you're doing 130 no. and they yeah. found your car. Yeah, exactly. So the, the, the GPS only struggles if you're in a really dense city, i found, or in a tunnel, obviously, because it doesn't have any GPS. Well, you shouldn't be speeding there anyway. Exactly. So that's the only time I've ever had them struggle is guys like downtown, and, yeah. and they're like, hey, my speedo kind of gets a little iffy, but other than that, they, they work pretty flawlessly. Cool. Yeah. Because like, like they sent me both, eh, Steve? Yeah. So we can't get the, because they think they said you can test the speedo, can you, with their kit? I haven't read the instructions, I'm going to let you, but he said. Oh, I'll go through it, yes. yeah. Yeah, we'll set it up. Because but, uh, show me what it is. Okay. And what's so special about it? Well, basically this is what they call their speed box kit. So normally when you're upgrading your motor and tranny, you might change your rear end gears, you might change your uh, transmission gears, you might change your tire size. So when you're running off GPS, basically this thing takes a GPS and spins this cable like it was attached to your transmission. Except no matter what size gears, what size tires, what tranny you put in, it runs off GPS, so you're always getting an accurate reading of your speed, as opposed to having to do converters and different gears in your transmission. It's just a pain in the butt. Ah, uh, Steve. Yep. Yeah. Oh. It's Whereas this, it doesn't matter what you change. Nope. Because it's running off a satellite, it still gives you an accurate speed reading. So, anyway, Speed Hut makes them. It's called a Speed Box. Nice. And if we can get my Speedo to work, we'll run that. If not, we'll run this beautiful Speedo that they made us. 
So that's the Speedo, this is the tack. Steve, have you ever mounted them into the factory gauges? Which these, uh... Because what we were thinking, here, I'll show you. Let me just pick your brain for 10 seconds here. Because what I'm thinking, okay, here's the instructions. Because like they make a bracket that, that, that you can mount it. Yes. I'm just wondering if you can. I've got, I've got a brand, brand new one of these because I broke this. Yep. If we can't, just take this off the, the, the visor. Yep. And just like mount it through here and just have it hanging in the holes. Which the actual speedo, if sure, yeah, if yep. if mine doesn't work, if not, we'll do the same thing. We'll just yep. we'll just mount the tack on the side of the column, then that way. So we're not using any of these gauges. We're using all of these ones. So I mean, yep. But that way, I can still use use my turn signal indicators. Yeah, we can wire up. We can figure out what works on there and yep. kind of make that stuff work. Yep. And whatever doesn't work on the factory cluster, we can we can use whatever the gauges you got here. Yeah, just to get you a, yeah some kind of. Well, the thing is, information I, when you're driving. Well, I'm gonna mount these three backwards. We have the other kit mounted here. Oh, I saw that. Yeah, the old auto yeah, meter ones. Right. So, so we can those, just yeah. pl plug those the, okay. those gauges in because so, we yeah. got all the wiring for them and everything. So, because yeah. Speed Hot was nice enough to give those to me. That's pretty killer. They're pretty good gauges. So, yeah. yeah. Well, anyway, yeah. see, Rust Bros. Oh, they even, oh, they even <laughs> custom made them. I didn't even see that part. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That's what I thought. That's so, awesome. Yeah. So, and they're in Provo. So, if yep. we make it that far, we're going to Toronto, yep. straight to Vegas for muscle cars on the strip, and then we're going to detour up through Provo. That'd and be awesome. Stop yeah. in and say hi to yeah. them. Okay, do, do you need this here or not? Don't need that at the moment. Okay, it's going to get started here. on the okay. dash wiring, and then okay. we'll start from there where I always start. So. Okay. So, typically, when I start these kits, I kind of okay, this box. I kind of open up the main fuse the main fuse panel bag first, and I go through and I pull out any of the unnecessary wire that we're not going to be using in the car. Because uh, there's a bunch of stuff that we just simply won't be using in the car. Yeah. Just adding for actually like third brake light and a bunch of other stuff like that. That's just simply irrelevant for what we're going to do. Yeah, because this is, I mean, basically, this we're is, adding nothing. There's exactly, no AC, yeah. there's no third brake light, yeah. there's no stereo, there's no radio. That's what I mean. So, like, I'll, I'll leave the stuff in for the radio. Yeah. Just because in the future you might want to put a stereo in the car, but yeah. I'll take out some of the unnecessary items and it just cleans up the dash harness a little bit. Yeah, because there's no power antenna. Exactly. I mean, I'm sure it's all just yeah. so, extraneous fluff. Exactly. So we'll, we'll start by ripping out all the extra stuff and then uh, we'll start to get this into the car. Okay, well, I'm going to leave you to it because yeah. I get dizzy looking at this shit. <laughs> okay, mind you, I mean, when I took it apart, we did, do you need, do you need the old harness? I will not. Okay. Yeah, uh, okay, yeah. So, wow. Yeah. Jeez, that looks. Hey, I almost recognize it. Most yeah. Of those. Yeah. The, the the cool part about the American Auto Wire kits is that they do all follow a GM color code, so all the colors should look the same as as the factory GM cool. kind of the 60s cars did. So you got your purple for your kind of starter circuit, pink on for key on ignition, and red or orange for battery power. So like a lot of that is it stays the same all through all their harnesses. So it's really easy if you do a few of them. To kind of understand like what the it just doesn't have. have 56 years of corrosion exactly yeah so we're yeah. dealing with new wire yeah like I mean, brand new, like, when we started everything worked by the time i got there i had no heat had exactly. no turn signals had yeah. no brake lights absolutely it was yeah. just yeah right good thing the headlights didn't die <laughs> <laughs> okay thanks team no problem will do probably do two or three car cars a year at this point everything else is EFI. Yeah, so this is like going this is like having a vacation why am i paying you what's what's EFI? electronic fuel injection uh. so then you got computers so i mean there's yeah. way more harnesses there's there's well uh, 
you got oxygen sensors, you've got yeah. mass air sensors or mass air pressure, or yeah. there's just way more sensors that the computer monitors. So yeah. you're doing less of the tuning yourself. It's all it's all programmed in. Exactly. Yeah. And that's why you see guys running six second quarters because they got the computer. Laptops there. out doing yeah. all the real work. And, yeah. yeah. Exactly. And then the guy just goes in and pushes the button. Yeah. Six seconds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Two hundred eight miles. <laughs> not quite that easy, no. but uh, yeah. yeah, it's a. Uh, uh, well, what it comes down to is data. Yeah. Uh, data is everything, especially when you you have a hundred thousand dollar engine in your car. You want as much data as possible to keep that engine safe. That's right. You don't uh, want to blow it up. So yeah, yeah. So the, the the reason behind the computer and all all the sensors is simply because we're trying to keep that motor safe together. Yeah. Well, I know. I know. We were talking to the uh, those guys that run that like that Dark Knight or like one of those top fuel Hemi cars. They said oh, the yeah. thing only turns over like 120 times. Yes. Yep. In the eighth mile or the quarter. Yep. That's because yep. that's it. <laughs> Yeah, it's over in three seconds. They're doing 300 miles an hour. Yeah, boom. Yeah, right. So I mean, it's like like it's pretty amazing. And like the crank twists, and Yo, they yeah. just got all the same. Like the whole thing's just twisting yeah. and bending. And yeah, it's a that's a very violent car. There's very few top fuel cars here in Canada, and, and uh, it's because it's a lot of money. It's a huge amount of money just to like not like you like guys running that level of car like from like kind of pro mod and kind of up. That's those guys are pretty much all out of pocket, and those cars are, are between quarter and half million dollar cars. Yeah. And every weekend those guys are out, they're spending and in, between wear and tear on the motor and just fuel and tires, and whatever else, they're spending between ten and fifteen grand a weekend out of their own pocket. Yeah, yeah. At, at minimum. Right. Like I mean, if, unless you're if, sponsored by something. Everything is, goes right. Yeah. Like, and if something goes wrong. It's 150 grand. Yeah, it can be a really <laughs> rough weekend. <Yeah. laughs> that's why we don't go drag racing. No, that that's why I sit in the back and I help those guys out of the racetrack, but yeah. I, uh, that's, no. uh, yeah, no. I definitely don't have the income to be able to support that. Well, company. I mean, we, we went from driving one of those G, G bodies, yeah. just a turbo LS. Yeah. That thing was insane. Yeah. Yeah. The guy said, I don't have a helmet for it. He says, who needs a helmet for we <laughs> did the G body shuffle halfway down the tracks. I was, you really wish you did. I wish I had a helmet because yeah. the whole car bends yeah. and flexes. And, oh yeah. And that's yeah. just slapping a turbo on a stock motor. Yeah. 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 Turbo on a, a properly tuned LS. They, those guys should be in, in the 750 range as yeah. far as horsepower at least. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah. And uh, so it depends what kind of combination yeah. you got, but I know about you guys running some pretty quick times on a stock stock LS. Yeah, just out of a junkyard, just grab yeah. one out junkyard, of a truck. Junkyard five slap. three, and, yeah. and away you go. Yeah. Um, I was gonna ask you a question. Yeah. Somebody says they make plug and play kits now for the for the like the older five sevens. Is that true? For like the T Dodge fives? or the Dodge? Um, I haven't done one myself, so I wouldn't. Oh really? Hand, but I don't get a lot of Dodge requests. Yeah. I got one for you later. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe do some research. I've, yeah, we've got sure. a 2011 5.7 yeah. with a six speed. Yeah, Holly does make a kick for those. For yeah. Sure. yeah, yeah. And I want to put it in a 72 Cuda. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, that should be a problem. Like, is that like days, a week, or I mean, what? It depends how far we go with it. Like, for me, when I do with kind of the higher end stuff, yeah. I'll build a harness from scratch because that's what yeah. I prefer to do. But if we just want to get something quick and easy that works, we can just use the quickly harness that comes with the Holly. Terminator kit and just put it in the car. Yeah, I mean, are, yeah. are those things good? I mean, I know, I know my buddy Dustin's done lots of them, but I do a lot of Terminator installs for street cars. That seems yeah. to be the ECU I use the most. Um, the racing stuff I'll use an HP or Dominator because we yeah. just need more data. Yeah, yeah, uh, and more capabilities. But as far you're, as, yeah, I mean, it's just going to yeah. be. Yeah. I mean, it's 300, I think 345 or 385 horse. Like, yeah. With a yeah. six speed stick. And so, a like that car. one, streetcar stuff, it seems like the Terminator seems to be the, the better of the ECUs as far as the simplicity goes. Yeah. Um, it comes with the ability to, to get a car easily started. Yeah. Um, you don't need to be a rocket scientist to get a car going uh, with how Holly's. Holly's gone above and beyond of any other ECU manufacturer yeah. that I use as far as making things. User friendly. user friendly right for and the old guys like exactly they, they, they've geared it toward guys who are like who, who uh, will recognize the holly brand and go hey i know that brand it's better yeah. forever i'll stick with that one because i know it um and the the way that they've done their drop down menu stuff it's really easy to use like okay choose your injectors choose your engine all the stuff and just it'll, plug and play it'll it'll create a, a kind of base file to get the car kind of started yeah. do i think that that's the best file going no. no i believe you should go to a dyno after that fact and get it properly set up but it will you can at least get your car started going and drive it yeah, yeah instead absolutely of, yeah. instead of spending months trying to get it started absolutely because i've yeah. seen a lot of guys that yeah. aren't, 
are like me. I mean, they're afraid to, yeah. they don't even know how to run their printer, let alone. Yeah, exactly. It happened, yeah. What happened when those guys tried to go on his laptop trying to figure it out? One, he has to learn the laptop, yeah. and then has to learn the software. So yeah. it could be a long, it's a long, big, giant learning curve for yeah. some of those guys that yeah. they just, uh, maybe it's just beyond them. And, and if you do use the Holly, there's here in BC alone, there's at least a half a dozen guys that I would trust to get your car started, tuned, and properly set up. Okay. That you can recommend. And get cool. Well, like I said, well, yeah. one day in the fall or maybe next winter when you're Absolutely. slow, I'll give you a ring because the motor's got 20,000 miles on it. No, it's got nothing on it. Yeah, it's been sitting there and I got it with the stick and even yeah. the little pistol grip shifter. <laughs> I just like to put it in something. 72 CUDA is nothing special. I mean, it's still no, a CUDA. Still. But it's yeah. not. Yeah. I don't, if I got to cut the tunnel to put in the six speed, I don't mind hacking the car. Yeah, some of the newer six speeds can be a little beefier than the factory transmission. Yeah. So sometimes you do need to open yeah. them up a little bit. And that's why for why this one I want the TKX because I like the TKX is nice and small. Soul. It's a great yeah. transmission. They hold a ton of power. And well, they're actually, what, they're actually reasonable money for what, yeah. for what they are. Well, I think when I was talking to Brandt, he was saying as long as you can find like an old small block Mopar four-speed bell housing bolts right, right up to, to those. Yeah. So I mean, so I mean, a guy could even. Put that motor in an old four speed, you wouldn't even have to act. Uh, right now, Steve, the master electrician from Wireworks, uh, we're going to do a test on this uh, Speed Hut Speed Box. Like it has a test and gauge because basically, if we can make the Speed Box work with my, my original Speedo, then we're going to go with it. I mean, I haven't had a Speedo on this car in 20 years. So, what it does, it just it runs off a GPS signal, but basically has a test feature. So, it'll test this speedo and if the speedo works then we'll go with the speed box and I get to use my original speedo and it'll read accurately no matter what rear end gears, what size tire, uh, what what tranny. And if it doesn't work because my speedo's hooped, well then we're gonna hook up their speedo which is right here, which is also based off a off of GPS. But it'd be kind of cool if we can use my original speedo. <laughs> and then we'll just mount their uh, their tack on the side of my steering column, just like the other tack was, and run their gauges underneath, because their gauges are going to be way more accurate than what these dummy lights are. I mean, all the factory gauges do is if it gets overheated, the light comes on, but you don't know what temperature it's at. So by the time the light comes on, you could have cooked your motor. So it's nice when you have an actual gauge and a reading. And what what else is special about these gauges? Show me uh, show me the rest, bro. All right, well, that basically they asked me what I wanted, so this one actually, uh, this is the tack, so it's got a three three light sensor, like, um, I know I know the green, yellow, and red, so you don't over, over rev it, you can set when it, when it comes on, we're also going to put an MSD box, so we can't over rev it, but you can also set that too, and then same thing, the Speedos runs off, off of G GPS, and then they just got really nice analog gauges, I mean, I don't like digital gauges, I like numbers, that's what I grew, grew up with, and nothing digital, so very nice, made in America, good guys are out of Provo, Utah, and if everything goes good, we're actually gonna be stopping by and touring their factory. Uh, I mean, and picking and up and some more also, free stuff. <laughs> and they also say Rust Bros, right? Yes, well, well there, we've got the tack to say, say Rust Bros, that's the gauge that we use mostly, is the tack. Look at that. Yeah. So basically, what have you hooked up here? Okay. So basically, we're just using a Milwaukee M12 battery. Yeah. We don't overpower anything. We just got the power and ground hooked up. I'm gonna hook the power up here in a second. And then uh, the Speed Hut box has a has a programming button on it um, to uh, just help us program this thing. So you just gotta press it, release it. Mm -hmm. It'll speed itself up to 60 miles an hour, which it does. So Look at that, press, 60 mile. Release it again, and then that's set the programming up. So that's it. So we know that the programming is, is pretty spot on for a GM Speedo. So we know his gauge works, it functions. So no we're going to use it. We're going to use it. Yeah. Pretty. Thank you, Speed Hut. That's <laughs> friggin' amazing. And it's that. Yeah. Geez, I could have done that. Yeah. I, <laughs> it is so simple that I, Mike Law, could have done that <laughs> if I had read the instructions, which I didn't. <laughs> well, that's pretty, so, that's pretty yeah. damn cool. It worked pretty well. That's that amazing. Was, uh, <laughs> that and was, quiet, that was sick. I didn't hear a thing. No, what I was wondering is how much you'd hear this. 
the actual motor and gear spinning. Well, I didn't hear. Well, did you hear anything? Nothing. I didn't hear anything. I heard Off nothing. Gauge over top of the box. Yeah. So obviously the motor inside the box. Box is, is super quiet. Very nice motor, obviously. So very we'll, cool. We'll find a spot on the dash to get that mounted up where we can actually get the cable routed yeah. up nice. Yeah. And so it's nice, no big kinks in it. Exactly. So it's right. Yeah. Because because you, you want to keep the cable as straight as you can. Yeah. We don't want any big sharp kinks, or it'll just make this pain in the butt. Well, I don't. Know. Yeah. <laughs> I cannot believe. Yeah. I'm impressed. <laughs> That's good. I, yeah. Well, well, bam, thank you, ma'am. Yeah, like, holy no, moly. No yeah, cool. So, that's probably a pretty good spot there. So we'll Adjust it. How tight of a loop are you going to have to get the. I should be able to get a fairly gradual loop onto it. Yeah. So, I think that should be plenty. So, pop it back through. So obviously the speedo is on this side. Yeah. And there's no sharp bends and kinks yeah. there. So I think we're going to go with that. We'll find some hardware. We'll get her mounted up. Cool. I'm sure there's probably stuff in there, kit. I mean, they seem to have a pretty yeah, comprehensive kit. Look good. Yeah. I didn't bother looking. Like I said, I opened it up and looked at it once and I locked it up before I lost anything, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> I know my limitations. I work within them. Yeah. But that was fun. That was fun. I got to say, that was fun. Yeah, me too. Uh, like I said, I like it when products are actually fun. Actually, well, they, they said they've sold yeah. hundreds of them. Yeah. They said well, and obviously, the one the one thing we didn't know was whether or not your cluster still yeah. actually functioned. So but we I mean, know it actually worked, sounded good. It worked brilliantly. There was no rattly, gross noise. No, no, good, 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 yeah. no click, click, click. Exactly. Yeah. So we know that the gauge is happy. So we were yeah. confident we could put it together and not have any problems. So that was freaking amazing. Okay, I'm going to go heat up my coffee. Keep up the good work, Steve. I'll try. <laughs>
Um, and all those kits from American Auto Wire do come with a template to, uh, that's like a double-sided sticky tape thing that you actually stick to it and you can actually use it as a template to grind out the extra spots you need to to fit it. You do a lot of these cars or? I, I, I do nothing but water. Um, and I, I probably install 20 of these kits a year minimum. Oh, wow. So I, I do a lot of these. Um, every once in a while, I'll have to build a kit from scratch just due to the complexity of the vehicle. Um, like aftermarket stuff? Or? Yeah, if somebody's like really modified the car yeah. um, and we're running a lot of newer electronics and newer things in the car, uh, sometimes this kind of old style wiring doesn't kind of work for that. Um, but because this car is staying pretty much what a 60s kind of muscle car is, we don't have to venture too far from how the wiring is going to get done. But everything will be new. We won't have to worry about old, old wire, old connections, old dirty grounds. Um, we'll know that everything's functioning in this car before it takes off. Just want to make sure all the switches are here that we need. The ignition, headlight, wiper switch. Actually, I'm going to look through this box. I might have all brand new ones. That would be even better. That way, order, yeah. Hang on. Okay. So this is... I think that's windshield wiper. Yeah, that's wiper switch. Yeah. Okay, so we got that one yeah, brand new. Because yeah. I was hoping because my, my little plastic things fell off the other one. But oh, I was hoping they came with it. But, knobs, yeah. but I think we can glue them together or something, right? We'll figure out something to get them yeah. on there. Yeah. yeah, okay. Let me just check the other... Uh, I wasn't thinking about the knobs. <laughs> Holy <laughs> what did we order? Like Christmas. Keep on. I don't know what to say. I don't know how to switch it. I just thought it came back. I think those are dwarfs. Maybe. What else is in here? Is this all Chevelle stuff? I don't, yeah, those are some of this for the 70 though. What's this? Master body kit, what's that for? 70 Chevelle. That might all be for 70. I'm hoping this is this is the right kit. All brand new screws for the, for the oh, interior. Oh, the cluster. Okay, for the dash bezel yep. screws. It says it, so everything should be there. Excellent. Okay. Trying to make it easy, mind Steve, because I know it's a pain in the ass coming here. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, got pretty good at working on the road, so yeah. Kind of used to it. Well, I mean, do you actually have a shop at home or do you just have uh, gun will travel? Pretty much, yeah. I, I do just my own stuff at home. I don't do it like I have a exactly. Wiring, I have a yeah, I have a wiring room at home that I build customers' harnesses that I send out. Yeah. Um, but I don't take I don't bring any customers' cars home. It's just no. my own stuff. So So what do you got? What do I have? I yeah. have my old Hudson Hornet hot rod and a couple other things. We we blew up a Hudson. Yeah. I still have the dash, I still yeah. got the grill for it though. Oh yeah, yeah. The ashtray and yeah. anyway. Oh funny. He yeah. didn't watch us blow that up, 42 pounds of tannerite. The whole did, car no. disappeared, it was a four door, but yeah. anyway. Yeah, oh so, crazy, yeah. So that's it, you got one car? One car and I'm building an S10 drag car at the moment too. What are you putting in it for a power plant? Turbo LS. You don't need a 572 720R brand new wrapped in plastic for you. No, I don't think so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not anything, but it uh, Ever guess this? Race gas. No, yeah. it's race gas. I'm yeah. 15 octane. Yeah. Cool. That's 10. You like those uh, those little trucks? I do, yeah. Connor had a couple of V8 ones that were nasty. Yeah, I wanted something for me and my kid to work on and just kind of have this project for yeah. two of us. And, and so that's kind of what we decided to play with. And so we found a nice little uh, kind of partially done project. And so right now it's getting the cage done. and. A couple other things ready for it, so cool. Yeah, yeah, should be fun. Like I said, we got a 700 horse, uh, 340 R block Dodge Dart coming. Oh, fun! Yeah, the old guy he was trying trying to make a like a, a super stock clone, so he took a 69 340 swinger. Yeah, tubbed it, did all the stuff, the van, A100 van seats, and before he got his Hemi finished, yeah, he ran out of time. That's sadly it's right. So how, he, how it goes. With that. So he was moving to a condo in Vancouver. How'd that so, work out for? Well, he sold me the car, the uh, the tr 20 foot trailer it's in, all his tools, the Hemi motor all in pieces, 13 to one for 40 grand. That's 
it's not a bad deal. Well, it was a smoking deal. When you yeah. see a picture of the car with the wheels three feet off the ground. Oh, yeah. Right, so it's got an actual Mopar R block in it. Killer. So anyway, so we don't know what we're going to do, do, do with the Hemi yet. Look at this guy, tear this apart like he's done. Oh, do you need the keys? Uh, I will need the keys to that one, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Show, show him the little trick with the pin. Oh, yeah. Right? There's a condition of it. That's why Chevy's are paying the cops. <laughs> yeah, stock ignition will need to, uh, it's a little tiny little hole here. So, what we need to do is get wow. the key in, turn it one key back, push a little uh, cotter pin or safety pin or something down in the hole. You'll feel it get a little bit of spring tension on it, and then you'll be able to roll it, keep ro ro rolling it to the left, and then the whole ignition switch will just pop out of the out of the switch itself. But we can keep going by pulling the actual stock cluster off the car you now. So without the key, you can't do it. Without the key, no, not unless you want to do some damage to all of it. Try that one. See. Get anything in there? Let's see. Let's see. Because I think they screwed up and caught me two of the wrong ones. Uh, well, that's not gonna go though. Okay, try that one then. No? Nope. Dirty, nope. rotten bag liquors. Oh, that's a winner. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that one will work. Yeah. That one will work. Okay. We just need to get a pick or a pin for the uh, other piece and then we can go yeah. from there. Yeah, okay, hang on. Let me see, see what I can get you. That's too big or is that about the right size? Let's see what we got here. Tiny bit too big. Okay, we need yeah. something smaller. See what happens, man? Well, there's a key, there's a spring in there, and you would push the spring down, then we get one here. And I'll let Steve explain it. Yeah. I don't kind of to, did. I don't want to steal the thunder. No, it's all right. Okay, but we need a pin. Jesus, my kingdom's for a friggin' pin. I think one of these will work, Steve. Yeah. Pick your poison. Okay, man, wait, you want to be, be on that side. Let's just make sure it fits first. Yeah. So that far. Oh, yeah. Okay. See, now you gotta find the right spot to line it up. See, so he puts it back to, to accessories, finds the... And I'll pop the ignition. Wasn't yeah. that a trick? And now you can take the take the screw off because that screws onto your ignition. Otherwise, you got to wreck that, and they don't they don't sell them. And why yeah. would they do that? Or is that so you can't change your ignition unless you have the key. Oh. But normally, why would you be wanting to change your ignition? Because you lost your key or wore out or <laughs> something. Wore out right? Or something, There's right? lots of reasons to right? do you it. You can't yeah. win. No. Anyway, it wasn't one of their better ideas. It's a pain. In no, it does make it a pain in the butt. Yeah. So now we're just going to rotate the actual little kind of beauty ring off. This part right. will just spin off the actual outside. You can get a screwdriver or this one seems to be working for you with our hands. So we'll just keep working at it here. And get it off. But one of their better, I well, probably an anti-theft theft device, mind you. All you got to do once you should show them how to hot wire that ignition. It takes, oh, takes two, yeah. no, don't, no, don't show them again. <laughs> it takes three pieces of wire about three inches long yeah. and you can, Pull the yeah, <laughs> They're easy right. to steal. How do, How do you know that, Mike? How do you know that? Because I hot wired lots. When you got no keys, you just pop the ignition off. You figure out which wire is your hot wire. So you run one one to the starter, and then one to the um, one to the starter, one of the solenoid. So you so you run power run power to the coil from the battery. You run power to your starter, and then you've got to just run power to the to the solenoid. So you. You jam them in, and then as soon as it starts, you pull the pull the power to the starter off, so it doesn't keep 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 running, right? So as long as you got power to the coil and the starter turns over, it's going to run if you got fuel and compression, right? In the old days, you just pop pop the ignition off the back, and you made a little thing with one two, one wire in and two out, right? One from power, one to the uh, starter, one to the solenoid, sort of thing. Easy to jump. That's why when you see those guys in the old cars and they're underneath the dash for about 30 seconds, they're firing the car up, that's how long it took. They have a little jungle wire. And you knew which ones you hooked to where. It didn't take long to play with it and find out. Just to show you the, the hookups they brought to these um, 
Where is the color the cluster? Oh, no, no, just the um, where is the box? Just the um, the brackets come off those pages. Oh, oh, is that what these ones here? Yeah, I mean that's why I was thinking if a guy could. Yeah. Either or, right? But, I mean, yeah. but you know what I mean. If there was enough room, you could just have them hanging right there. Yeah, we could do just that. Just in front, right? right? And then I wouldn't have to mount them on the uh, on the column itself, right? Yeah. Because I can always buy a new a, a new gauge cluster. I just want to showcase their of course, their yeah. yeah. Well, I can play around with it. Too. Yeah, I mean, just to see. I mean, if not, we'll just yeah. stick them with zap straps onto the freaking uh, right. Because we could have one each side of the steering column too. Speed on the left and tap, yeah. tap on That's the right. That's kind of definitely like kind of the last if we wanted to go that route. But so. We're thinking about taking, taking the clear off, taking the lenses off, and then potentially mount and then those. Just mount them like just right so we have the back there. in here. So I mean, either or. I mean, we can see what it looks like, and it looks goofy. We can, as long as I'm showcasing their stuff. Of course. Yeah. But because the thing is, if if this works with their speed box, yeah. then I won't use their speedo. No, because like what? Because like, we don't we don't technically need the cable part of this. All we really need is just the GPS speedo. Uh, well, no, because yeah, well, then if we use yeah. their speedo, yeah. But if but if this yeah. one works, then yeah. we can just wire this, and then I just, do we know if that one works? Well, I've never tried. It used to, but I yeah. mean, then we switch trannies, so I don't know if it works. But he said the there's the TKXs do have a cable drive on them, I do believe. Do yeah, but, but I've never yeah. done it because I mean, then you're running different tire sizes. You're running different. Yeah, you may have to change the internal uh, gear inside the yeah. CPN to make. Yeah, but I just motion. never bothered. I figured this. Yeah. Is, yeah. Because he said there, there, there's a way you can test it yep. to see if it works. So anyway. Just... I'll figure it out. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I have a gray hoodie. There it is. Ooh, nice and shiny. Oh, so. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I, I should have bought new kit, but I mean, I don't, I don't like the dummy lights. Yeah, this one's just got dummy lights for the right. generator and temp and oil. Yeah, at least that way, if we run the three gauges, you can actually see, you see what the oil pressure right? is, what the actual voltage is. Yeah, yeah, this comes in a lot. Well, yeah. you want to know what your car is doing. Yeah, especially if you're going for such a long drive as you guys yes. are planning to do, uh, you'd, I'd like to know that. <laughs> but it says that it's that the car has yeah that the car has yeah that the car has oil pressure and it's got the functioning yeah. temp gauge and, and it says yeah. here because I mean these these big blocks I mean when they're when they're warm they're warm they they probably run at like fourteen pounds yeah. I, yeah. like an idle you just only oh, yeah. yeah. so that's what they say but as soon as you rev it it's up to forty when you start them there at sixty even with the five twenty right yeah. but I mean I guess that's why they rev so quick because they got that light oil I love that motor yeah no they work well yeah. lots of torque. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, Connor's 800 horse, and he has about well, 50 pounds more more torque. Yeah. But he's got another 2,000 revs. Yeah. So a little whatever. bit less weight, but other. But his motor yeah. was 40 grand. Exactly. Yeah. It's a, it's a big, big difference. There's a yeah. big difference between 40 and 15. Absolutely. I can blow up two of those, and that. And it's still, it's still okay. Yeah. yeah. That's right. <laughs> so whatever. He got my fuel card anyway. What the hell does he take? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, I'll give you this too. Where, where do you want this? Here? Right there's good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We were going to put it in before I went drive racing. I should have. Oh, <laughs> right. What is that? Okay, what this does, like Steve says, these big blocks, they do not like to over rev. So what this does, it gives you a better spark, but, it, it, but it, there's a computer in here that measures your, your revs. If you put in a little pill that tells, you, tells the computer when it stops giving it spark. So if you set it at 5,000 RPM, well, as soon as you hit 5,000 RPM, it stops giving your motor spark. So no spark, no combustion. You can't over rev it. So basically, it's like a, it's like insurance. A little bit of insurance. <laughs> a little bit of insurance. Because I mean, if you blow a shift and your foot's right to the floor, that thing will go to seven or 8,000 RPM and blow up. Has it happened to you? I have blown up a couple motors through abuse, but I mean, that's why I bought this for this one and then we never had time to put it in. So yeah, we'll now that it. Steve's back, we're gonna... We'll get her set up so it's yeah. all happy and safe. Yeah. yeah. And, it, and it does give, give you a better spark than factory ignition, doesn't it? Absolutely does, yeah. 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 So I mean, the hotter the spark, the, the quicker your combustion, the 
cleaner your fuel burns. I mean, it's like it's a win-win. It just, I mean, when GM's making millions of motors, they want to make it as cost efficient as possible. So they, they don't do it, right? But the new motors, they, they've all got that built in, right? Yeah, you can't over, over revenue diesel. It just cuts the fuel. Yeah, fuel timing will come out of it. Yeah, so. I'll give you, oh, it's a little, it's the, uh, little, oh, oh, the, just a little, like, I logo. think that yeah. goes right there. Yeah. On the back side of that. Yeah, yeah. 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 Nice. Because, so, in, because in the SS's that had the option, this was gone and that yeah. stupid roll up pack was there. Yeah. That's never cool. worked. <laughs> um, so, do we want to try and see if that Speedo works and use that one, or we, do we want to just use the Speed Hub ones? Well, I don't know. I mean, if, if we could get it to work, then we could, if we. Have you read the instructor? I mean, if we could use the speed box of mine to run it, yeah. Then, uh, then I'd like to keep it because then yeah. it's there, and then I'll just mount their tack yep. on the steering column. Okay. But I okay, mean, so first like, step, we should just test see if that works. Yeah. I so can I run just, through see if that see if that functions. So so what do you do? Hook it up to power and drive your yeah, car we can down, just, down the road or what? No, no. We can just use like a drill battery, like an M12 yeah. Milwaukee, and temporarily wire up the box. Yeah. Um, and then just run it through its test feature and see if it wants to speed oh, engage. Okay, yeah. perfect. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. I know they said you can test the speedo yeah. before you put it in, but yeah. that's why they said, well, we'll give you a speed box in case it works. If not, yeah. we'll give you one of our speedos. Perfect. So, like, so we'll work with that. So, yeah. we're going to try and make that one work. Uh, it, it feels like it's functional, like it's coming back. Yeah. Like it's supposed to be. Well, that'd be a pretty cool yeah. thing. Yeah. Like, yeah. Right? Yeah. Well, because it's not just like it's getting stuck somewhere and it's going back to zero, it makes me think the spring, everything inside of there is still functioning. Yeah. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to temporarily hook up the cable drive box uh, to a drill battery and run through their test sequence. And we should be able to see this thing sweep and function. Yeah, because if it works, yeah. then like I said, basically, yeah. then we, we just we leave this original, yeah, put we'll it all just, back yeah, in. We'll and then, just mount, and then, mount these underneath the dash where yeah. my other ones were. And, and then call them out this piece. Yeah, right. call them out the tap yeah. and then Bob's your uncle. Yep. And that way we can highlight their gauges and yep. I can wax exponentially and poetically about their speed box. <laughs> Holy moly, first time in 20 years I've had a speedo. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Okay. okay so, yeah. did it work before the speedo? Twenty some odd years ago, it worked for <laughs> not not long. But the problem is, how well, the old ones work, man. Well, they're just like one of those cables, like those vacuums. You know, just a cable. So you've got ten feet of cable spinning. Yeah. So there's a lot to go on. It gets dirt in there. It's dirt, it crusty. There. The cable binds up. It needs like they need to be lubricated. Like if someone has a little bit still works, yeah. you take it out. Because the thing is, like they'll wind up and it'll yeah. work, and then it goes spring. Exactly. And it'll wind up, and then so, your speedo's doing this absolutely. all day, right? Yeah. So yeah. if you if someone were to take it apart and clean it up and lube the cable again, sometimes they do come back to life. Yeah. But a lot of times they don't. The like I said, the, the, and uh, when they told me about the GPS, it says that's cool. Yeah. Exactly. Right, because then yeah. you're actually getting yeah. an accurate you're getting reading. A true actual reading. It's going to output yeah. when it's supposed to, to the gauge, and so hopefully we make that part function. Like and then I might not be doing three grand in overdrive anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, fast. I was going on a stop. Yeah, I, I was listening yeah. to Led Zeppelin was my last excuse. <laughs> <laughs> so what we're at now is just this harness comes set up if you potentially have a center console. I do. And an automatic. Okay, I don't have an automatic. Don't have an automatic. So yeah, so like some of these wires, this is like for the neutral safety switch. This is, uh, these two are for your reverse lights. Uh, but obviously they're on the transmission. Yep. So we're gonna have to route them kind of along and then drop them down on top of the tranny and then wire them up underneath the car. Okay, cause we can, like if we can pick this up yep. and you've got about a foot between the the arms, like if, if, if we use these arms. Oh yeah. Right, yeah. I've, 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 got, yeah. I've got a scissor jack. Okay, yeah. Maybe right? just jack stands up on jack stands. Yeah, yeah, plenty, okay. Plenty enough, yeah, yeah. I'm fine with that. Um, so we'll have to get those underneath the car, down to the transmission, which is yeah. a big deal. Um, Are those speed tech gauges the same size as those ones? That's pretty common size, like you're, you're kind of two and sixteenth gauge. So yeah, because if they are, then we can just use that just, bracket. Because it, it came with that little bracket, yeah, that, that one there, yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, so that yeah. should be fine. And yeah. then I'll save those auto meters for something else. They go in something else yeah. that you don't need uh, yeah. as nice of gauges in. Um, so then I did run an extra wire over from an extra peon source 
uh, because obviously the gauge wiring here was meant for the cluster. Yeah. But because we've got gauges going over here, I had another 12 volt wire uh, that'll go down and power these gauges up. Okay. Um, and then we can. Yeah, because there's just one wire powers them all, right? Exactly. So and the well, sensors come. Yeah, come the sensors off come the with their own their own units. So then yep. we need to make sure we have a ground over there, which we do, and then we also need to make sure we have a um, a, a backlighting source uh, coming from the the actual headlight switch. Uh, which we have an extra one of because, like I said, it, it was it was coming set up for a separate console. Yep. Uh, the gray wire here is our dash lights, uh, so we'll use that that one to power our lights that'll be uh, behind the gauges over there. You're making me dizzy so. already. <laughs> <laughs> it's the reason you're here, and I'm not yeah. sitting there going, "What the f am I doing?" Yeah. No. So like I say, I'm, I'm very familiar with these harnesses. I, yep. I use them all the time, so I'm very familiar with the color combinations, what needs to be where, and what needs to go where. Um, so right now I'm just laying that out and then we're going to grab some zap straps and just kind of tie this up a little bit more. It's a little sloppy how they send it. Yeah. Could you put it in this way and make it work? Absolutely. Does it look nice? Absolutely not. No. Uh, yeah, because I know the original one had a couple clips wired into it that stuck into the dash. There you go, and we're going to reuse those clips. Oh, okay, yeah. So when we go to put this in, we're going to take those clips off the dash piece and we're going to zap strap them to here. Yeah. And as we, as we lower the cluster in, the whole connection, we'll clip those in because that's what holds this harness up. Um, there's nothing else in these cars that holds the wire. Um, that's just the way the Chevelle dashes all are. Uh, so we will reuse those clips into the back of the cluster to hold this up as we bolt it into the dash. Cool. Um, there's, there's lots of slack on all this stuff, so we should be able to pull it out fairways Get everything plugged in, plunk the whole dash in as one unit, and then we'll be we'll be laughing once we get to that part. So right on. Yeah. So right now we're just yeah making sure I got enough wires to where we need to be over on the other side. Um, the kit does come with. Uh, does it does it come with the door sensor ones? Because it got doesn't come with those. We will need to source some of those ones. The kit does come with courtesy lights, the actual uh, sockets and uh, pieces that we can bolt underneath the dash. Okay. Um, well, not the. Mine, yeah. mine never had it. That's the only thing that ever. Lit yeah. Up. So, like they said, the kit comes with them. Uh, it's part of the kit, so we will mm -hmm. install those. You will have courtesy lights on the floor, and it does come a provision for the actual factory dome light. Yeah. So we will have uh, enough lighting in here to. Yeah, because I think that came. I forget where that came. They usually drop down the C pillar. Okay, in the that's right. right. I can. I think yeah. that's why I left that there. Yeah. Okay. So I'll do that plug, but yeah, it will come with uh, a spot to actually attach that in the back. So. <laughs> All we did now is add one more ground tab, the cluster, and that way we don't have to rely. If you look at like the factory, how the factory originally did the grounds on, on the ground. Yeah, one of them was down underneath so, here somewhere. Yeah, so th this tab runs down to ground the cigarette lighter. Yeah. And then this ground wire comes down and grounds the wiper switch. But what grounds and then down? One tiny little screw up into the dash. So if that screw is loose for any reason, you will lose your wiper switch, you'll lose all the dash lights, you'll lose all of it. So what do you do? Do you put so a couple this additional one, ground? The kit actually comes with a, sp a specific ground wire to ground the cluster that's already built into the harness. So we're going to add that to a ringlet to the metal backing of this. Yeah. And then that way we're not always having to rely on the one screw. So where does this ground wire go to? On the other side of these plugs, we're going to find a spot on the actual steering column. column. And we'll ground it there. Okay, yeah. yeah. And okay. then that way we'll know have a good clean ground. Yeah, because I know when I undid yeah. the harness, there was one, one wee little black wire down. Yeah. Somewhere yeah. here. I don't know. Oh, what interesting. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that would that wouldn't have been factory. I don't think. Uh, let me see if I can find it. I don't have the harness right here. What's your job? Because I left the screw in. I even left the screw under the dash where it was. Hang on. What is this? I'm going to assume that was going across the power of the gauges. Okay, though. this one. No, no. okay, it's going. Oh, okay, yeah. no, that, that was your tab in the there top. Yeah, okay. So okay, yeah. Oh, yeah, I think both of them are here. I would have stuck them back. Where's the other one? That one what's, we can save. Yeah, what's that? With. What was that? That is, I am not 100% sure. It looks like part of an old switch. Was that the. Um, if I know. Here's your glove box, which we use that one to okay. save you. Okay, well here, see? Yeah. There you go, cannibalize what, yeah, what you need. So what? That. You got some light bulbs. No, we might as well put new light bulbs. Yeah. But I don't see the other door switch. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. What's this switch? This door is the uh, door pin switch to activate the courtesy lights. Nice. So we'll clean so those up with the wire. Here, here, I'll, okay, anyway, I'll, yeah. I'll show you. See? So when you're, 
It's a, like it's a little spring, so it kind of mounts right in this hole here. So when the door opens, that light goes on. Okay, yeah. Right? So it mounts, screws in right there, and then when the door opens, it turns on, on that light. And Steve's gonna wire in a couple more, so we'll have one under, a couple under the dash, so you can see the, see the floor, which is kind of handy in, in, in the dark. Yeah. When you drop your drop roach, your drop joint, your, <laughs> you're looking for your cigarette or whatever, yeah. back in the day, right? And so that'll work off the, off the actual originally, like it would have yeah, been. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. The so first those will all be tired together, yeah. so you'll yeah. be able to turn them on while you're driving. I mean, the old days, that was why. I yeah. mean, back in the day, I must admit, before it was legal, I didn't smoke a little marijuana. <laughs> but that's what these windows are for. Yeah, they would have. You yeah. roll these down and crank these sideways, and it just clears that smoke out. Yeah, crack the rear vents, yeah. crack the front vents. Yeah, and yeah, yeah hot box. <laughs> yeah, and clears it right away. Okay, there's some room to maneuver. So what do we have to? Uh, basically, you've got to wire up the tram with the reverse switch and that. So when you put your transmission into into reverse, the reverse lights go on in the back. <coughs> I don't know if there's a neutral detent switch on this or not. So you can't start it unless it's a neutral. I'm not sure. We're gonna find out when he gets here. Oh, well, he's got to get underneath to the tram. And if we use the uh, hydraulic lift. We'll go back another inch. If we use the hydraulic lift, he, he might not have room. So we pull to the head of the hydraulic lift. I mean, basically, we're going to be driving this car across Canada and then two thirds of the way across the good old United States of America. The, the weird part is you're driving across Canada in still technically winter. <laughs> well, that's when the show is. I mean, I would have much preferred to do this in June, but I mean, well, the first thing they said, like, they weren't going to put the car inside. Yeah. Because had no big deal. Yeah. But then they came back and said, Mike, we want you to put your car inside. Yeah. Well, how can I put a car inside that's two different colors, yeah. 40 different paint chips, yeah. dance all over the thing. At the, I mean, all of a sudden, yeah. well, we got to do something. Something. Yeah, a little something, right? And a little what, something. What did you do? Well, we it was just supposed to be a splash. That's why we never took the glass out, right? And then once Blair started on it, well, we've got to make all the gaps perfect. Yeah. Right? I mean, and, uh, you know what? Uh, yeah, cut the fenders apart, gap the hood, cut the rear quarter, gap the trunk. I mean, all of a sudden it's like Blair's always saying, well, where are you going to stop? And I'm saying, Blair, where are you going to stop? Yeah. It's just almost like we're back doing the TV show, race to the finish. But, yeah, I, I'm but not, I'm whatever, we've got time. Definitely not a fan of photo finish builds. No, uh, no. I mean, everyone we ever did was a race to the finish. <laughs> I mean, once you got everything wired up, it's all pretty simple. Basically, plug and play. Once you've done all. Yeah. That. So all, the entire cluster for all the gauges is just these two plugs. One yeah. basically the signal wires, and then the other one is the power and grounds. Yeah. Um, and this again was all built into the kit from American Auto Wire, so it makes life definitely simpler as far as getting. And then because like the factory dash never had that. Yeah. You had to come back here and unplug all the light bulbs, all the other crap back here. Um, so this is like an added feature to. That's why they call it the hot rod upgrade. Yeah, so like it definitely helps a lot if you ever have to take your dash back out, being able to, because like otherwise, like a lot of people would mess up, which like where their light bulbs would go. Yeah. You're plugging the dash light into like the turn signal hole and all the other crap like that. So it definitely helps eliminate a bunch of a bunch of missed points on your car. That because uh, when you're holding the dash up, trying to get everything plugged in, it can definitely be a chore. Yeah. So that's that's your ignition plug you're plugging in now. Yeah.
You're an electrical, right? Yeah. <laughs> Still here to make a successful car product. Yes. Ah, that's right. Of course. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Uh, did, did he tell you how they built an electric G wagon? What's a G wagon? The Mercedes SUV. Never seen one. His client had like a dozen of them. He wanted an electric one. They took oh. 280 pounds of wiring out of the car and converted it to electric. It was at SEMA last year outside by the Toyo part. I, I know, you and me wouldn't be looking at Mercedes G Wagon. No. But, but Steve was the guy the guy yeah, doing, really? doing the wiring. So yeah. Holy so this he could do in his sleep. Oh, right. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> well that's pretty cool. That was a fucking yeah, it, it was cool. How long did that take? A couple of months. <laughs> yeah. So imagine taking a three, four hundred thousand dollar car and then cutting it. <laughs> And making it electric, especially a friggin' Mercedes. Yeah. I thought that was quite spectacular. You're not leaning on the paint, are you? No, I'm not touching it. If I was Avery, we'd be ha hanging over. He'd be on it, but I'm not. So we're at a point of testing the wiring, and uh, so we're gonna get the fuses put in the car, get the battery hooked up, and we're gonna start rolling through the lighting circuits first, and then uh, hey, well, wait, wait, we'll roll through the ignition yeah, side yeah. of things, check the gauges, yeah, and right, start right, try, right, try, try and start the car up afterwards. Us, so you just throw in one at a time? I go one at a time. Yeah. I do lights first, then do, then do ignition circuits, accessory circuits, test the heater fan, all that stuff. Oh yeah. No, so no, no, I always start with the lights. Lights always want to go first. Then the light 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 light. Light. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, we've made some good progress today. Everything seems to be going in as it should and no hang ups other than a couple connectors we didn't have here that we were able to source from Orco and then uh, I just got the starter back in and everything's ready to test. So I'm, for three days of wiring, I think it's pretty good. <laughs> right on, man. I'm so glad it's you. Yeah. <laughs> Not my favorite thing. You wouldn't have wanted to do that? Mm. Well, He's much better. He's much faster. And uh, yeah, I don't. It's almost as much fun as sanding for me, you know. <laughs> so I'm surprised Mike didn't make me do it. Actually, <laughs> but with the schedule, when Steve comes in, it's just trouble free. We have no worries. He leaves, everything works. It's awesome. That's worth a lot. So I'll carry on with putting on tags and lights until I see it of smoke. And I don't think we'll see it. <laughs> But we're laughing now. So, I carry on. What's happening, Steve? We're powering this video. We're powering this video. <laughs> Power to the people. Oops, awesome. <laughs> Man, there's so much dirt in this shop. It's disgusting. It is funny when Steve leaves it alone. I have not been this dirty working in the car. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, so I will not, I will not, uh, yeah, it is. Uh, You're not going to sugarcoat it for us? I will not sugarcoat it. It's been a wonderful it, yeah. experience. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you wait to come back. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful experience, sure. Yeah. Dirty? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, well, that's great. Yeah, we'll just make sure oh, that it's in I neutral. see a light. Oh, we got some. What? Mike, come oh, check light. it out. Courtesy light? Oh, yeah, because the door pins are open, so we're about oh. to have oh, some right. courtesy oh, lights. Oh, look at that, see? Yeah. I wonder if the other thing I never ordered. Oh yeah, so yeah, we got courtesy lights. One courtesy light yes. working down there. This oh, one is great. not working for some reason, and I don't know why. It would have been Actually, while well, you're just plugging them, I'm just going to go out and look in that Chevelle and see if it has one. What's that? Oh. Would that be for fortuitous? Fortuitous indeed. Fortuitous. Oh, look at these nice new door handles. Ooh. They are Ooh. very nice. They work. Thank you so much. And now everybody can open the door before you had to, like you had to push up on the handle and hold your mouth a certain way to open it. It was, yeah. mm -hmm. it drove yeah. Blair nuts. It did. <laughs> Not out. Not out. Those are the fuses going in? Yeah. So the kit comes with all the fuses, obviously. The, this page here just kind of shows us a a map of how they've got it log, uh, set up from the American Auto Wire kit. Yeah, so. that lucky. That's just phone. I bet you they got one in stock. What are you missing? The, the dome light lens. Oh, the lens. The yeah. lens. We got yeah. the light. We got the just. You know, we got one in my car. It's not the same. Whoa! We got four. <laughs> we got four. Try it. Try it. We got two. We got four. 
Nice. We got two, two, four, six, eight. Yeah. Who do we appreciate? Yay, yeah. Steve! <laughs> <laughs> I do appreciate it. Uh, okay, I'm gonna guess. We got Mark. Well, 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 okay. Does this go? That goes, yeah, I think that. Here? Yes, that goes uh, on the other side. side. Yes, it does. And then this holds it in. Wow. Let me Who else can it go? Right? It could go inside the fender. But and I don't know. If I put then, it inside there. Then what holds it in? Because the lens should be. Then where are these two screw holes for? Okay. On the back of there. Do you have a retainer that goes over the back? No. If there was a retainer, it would be in there. I'm thinking, hang on. Take that off. Okay, so if you put that there, and then just plug that in, right? That goes in there. Does this fit flush when you put it on? No. Fits flush out here. Okay. I think yes, okay. I will go with your... I think that makes sense because otherwise it would be way back in and it should be flush out here. Okay. So I actually think the gasket goes underneath that. Not that one, this one in your hand goes underneath. Oh. You know what I mean? Like the gasket, right? You're saying this has to go in behind that? Thing. Yes. Well, that would make it rather difficult. Okay, so this. How many body men does it take to put on a, a light? Okay. <laughs> they probably, probably, probably got to go in at the same time. Holy. Holy. Bingo, does that not look perfect? It looks perfect, Mike. Okay, we're going with that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I know you couldn't have done it without me. But I couldn't. Where did I put the freaking nuts? I just had the nuts. Nuts. Oh. We got the brand new lenses coming, but they aren't here yet either. Pump it, pump it twice and half back. That's the choke. Yeah. I don't hear turn on the ignition. Am I hearing the fuel pump? No, there should still be enough that I took the fuel pump fuse out just, oh. just while I was testing everything. Oh, okay. That's why it ain't running. Yeah. That thing is the loudest thing on the car. Yeah, that's why I did it. The fuel pump, I mean, it's a honker, but I mean it. It works. Good. Good. Hear it? <laughs> We have contact. Can I turn the exhaust fan on? Or are you going to run it for a Okay. I just wanted to see. Did you shut this back and off? Or? No, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Well, I can fire up more time. Yeah. That way it's back. Okay. You want to go on that side, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any, anywhere you like it. You know, like, anywhere you like it, that's the way. The front signals are in the bumper, is that where they are? Yeah. Front yeah. We're just waiting for the right ones and they ain't coming, so we're okay. already testing and we're just going to plug in the 69s we got. Because they're, they're bigger. We bolted in a set we had, but the 68s are on back order. Wow. Well. <laughs> Well, I knew it'd work. He's doing it. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah, but I'm still hot. You know, it all works. Yes, yeah. the heater works. Yes, yeah. the heater works. <laughs> okay, we play all the words on the car. Yeah, I'm like please be the heater. <laughs> <laughs> we don't care. Hey, here's, here's a boiler. Oh, yeah, it's good. It's not plugged in yet, is it? Yeah, it is. Okay, I bet yeah, you it don't work. It never did. I'm gonna jump it at the column and see if it's an issue with the column or if it's an issue with the Okay, okay. 
Uh, see, see, I knew I could stomp them. <laughs> it's, it's something we do. You're almost. Uh, no, it'll be in the car. Only put the, that's the original car. It'll, it'll be in the car. You changed it all, right? Another factory wheel? Yeah, that's the original wheel. Oh, I'm impressed. That's why it's broken. Okay, well, they never worked. They could be seized. They're probably seized up. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. You know, we aren't going through through vehicle inspection. But anyway, we'll just change those. I bet yeah. you take the call apart, you'll find that little spring's broken or something in there. Yeah. Later. Okay. We, we don't you need that. Up two new horns from Loco. Yeah. Actually, yeah, and a contact switch. I bet you they think a poor little Bambi steps off to the shoulder of the highway and you're Get the <laughs> Can you get a Volkswagen horn? Me, me, actually, we should mount, a, mount the roadrunner horn That's in here. Right. Just piss people That's off. Right. Me, me. I have a brand new one. You do? Hey, where is it? You haven't made that out of. I'm not here, Doug. Nope. You're going to ground with me. I'm going to mix that bolt. This bolt? Okay, okay, now I'll try it. Oh, there we go. Okay. Okay. Circuit works fine. Okay, yes, there we go. Okay. We just covered his butt. Yeah, okay. <laughs> no, okay. Yep. Okay, put that back in the box. What? That's a good one. Who's in here? Fine. Eat me. Okay. I'm going to fill it all anyway. Glad you're almost out of the woods. What are you going to be doing? You happy out of here? Yeah, clean up, get my butt on the road, happy everything works, and uh, you guys can continue on with the project, and we'll see you on the next one. Yeah, right. Yeah, remember. Well, we did two thirds of the